Are you okay? You know, really, are, are you okay? Let's play into makeup and talk about adult friendships slash relationships, but more so on the friendship side because it's a topic that's important and I know you wanna talk about it, okay? Let's start off with this Anastasia Beverly Hills stick foundation because it is just so good. It's a beauty balm, excuse me. It's the shade 15. I use this in a different video, which if you haven't seen that, make sure you watch it, make sure you subscribe and follow me on all my socials on Instagram and TikTok. Links are always below. This is so good, I love it. And if I recall correctly, because I've worn it one time, it does cover dark spots but once you blend it in does it still do that i try so many foundations out it's hard to remember what every one of them does because i know i had a blemish here on my cheek although it might be lighter now which will make it less of an issue. Let's first establish that I am grown. Grown meaning not in my 20s and almost in my 40s. So that is the vantage point through which I am looking at the idea of friendships in my adult years. That's gonna be different if you are in your 20s or in your 30s, so keep that in mind. Growing up in Rhode Island, I was around a lot of friends. I mean, you're in school for God's sake. So whether you're in school or you're working in an office, I work now, but obviously I work for myself. So I'm a lot more isolated these days than I was, of course, growing up and or are working for somebody else. Do we see the skin? Do we see the material? The glow is just so good. There's a tug to this too, and I have not put on any primer. Oh, I forgot I wanted to do this. I want my skin to glow, my chest. So I'm gonna use this Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, and this is the ultra or extra glow one. Let's give it a shake. And oh, it feels so cold. We can certainly put this on the skin of the body to make it glow. Do you see that? It's not just because it's wet, let it dry. This is good for the face, although I trust that this beauty balm is gonna make my skin glow regardless, so I'm not gonna put this on my face, although I could. Let's just see how it all comes out. But I did want the body to glow, okay? So there's that. This is my shade, it's so good. If you have this and love this, comment and let me know. Here's the Sephora Best Skin Ever Concealer in the shade 47. And obviously we all know when we're younger and we have friends, a lot of it is based on where we are, what we're doing, okay? So if they're from your friends from school, your friends from work, your friends from the neighborhood. They're just your, your friends by default. Sometimes you don't even like them or maybe they don't even like you. But again, your friends by default. But of course, when you are an adult, you have a choice as to who you want to be around and who you want to be around you. You feel what I'm saying? So we go from having friendships that usually last a long time because you're in the same environment, maybe the same sports team, the same theater team, the same after school program. I mean, I'm taking this way back and we're going to come to present day. Okay. So work with me. We're blending this in. I like this sponge. I like this concealer a lot because it gives a glow. It's not full coverage, maybe medium. It looks so good though. We'll brighten this up in a little bit. So growing up, I had those friends that I was friends with for a very long time. I mean, from what, middle school up until I left Rhode Island, really. And I've been in Houston now for 14 years. So yes, we had a great friendship. Yes, we had things in common. But when I moved to Houston, things changed because again, the environment has changed. There's a lot more effort required to maintain friendships. And you know what I'm talking about if you ever left a certain team or left a certain place of employment, you have to work harder to maintain those friendships. And that throws a whole wrench in the whole situation. You feel what I'm saying? And of course, when I left Rhode Island and came to Houston, I was an adult. So then you're an adult. Maybe the stuff that you had in common with those friends back when you were younger, you no longer have in common. And that's just normal. Sometimes people will feel like you need to still be friends with someone you've been friends with for a long time because you've been friends with them for a long time. I don't believe in that. Because if you've grown apart, you've simply what? Grown apart. Here's the Elf Cosmetics camo in the shade deep chestnut. The skin is still glowing. You can grow apart for a myriad of reasons. It doesn't mean that it needs to be taken as an insult or it means that you're better than that person. It simply means that you've grown apart. Can you imagine still having things in common and maybe you do and you can come in and let me know. I just have not experienced having much in common with friends that I've had since middle school. Not a lot. One or two maybe, but not a lot. So it's not common, at least from what I've seen, that you're still going to have things to relate about with friends that you had when you were an adolescent, you feel what I'm saying? So change has to happen. And although I like things to be the same, I like continuity, change is also good. And moving to Houston helped me to really embrace that change because I had no choice. I mean, I, I mean, I had a choice to move here or to not move here, but the fact did remain that I didn't have a job back in Rhode Island, so I had to. I mean, I could have just stayed out of a job and kept looking, but come on now. I was like, no, 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 it's good. I gotta move, you feel me? And I'm not the kind of person to be led by friends when making decisions. I'm very much a loner. And that was to my detriment some would say, because I'm a loner. I'm not the, let me talk about this decision with all of my friends and see how they feel. No, I'm the, I already decided and I told you after I did it. That's me. And it is what it is. This is the LYS Stick Bronzer and they bedazzled it for me over the holidays, which was so 
cute. And this is the shade Worthy. We all know, of course, you can have friends or many of us have had friends in workplaces. And that's where it becomes, in my opinion, nasty work. You know how you have friends and y'all be talking about, you know, your coworkers and your boss together. It's gossip a little bit, but some of it is really because you can relate to what is going on in the workplace, you feel me? And you feel like this is your friend. You can trust them. You can't tell me there haven't been instances where you felt like somebody was your friend and it turns out that in your opinion, by based on your information and belief, that that person threw you under the bus. So what you mean, I thought that we were friends and we're not. In addition to that, how about deep friendships that you feel like you've had at work? Maybe some of them are truly deep. I'm just saying, sometimes they ain't that deep. I won't lie. I'll look back and I literally remember certain people from certain places of employment that I was really connected to. I mean, I look back and I'm like, yo, at that time of life, we were really doing life together. I wonder where she is. I wonder what she's doing. I wonder what they're doing. You feel me? But you just get so disconnected from the person because what mended us together was the workplace. And sometimes in some relationships, when that commonality is removed, can the relationship really be sustained? And I've found that in many cases it can't. You have those friends where you might check in with them every now and again. I wonder what so-and-so and so-and-so is doing, you feel me? But I can't say that. Since I went full time in my business, there's no connection to anybody from my old workplaces. And that just is what it is. It truly just is what it is. A lot of it is what I found to be circumstantial, you feel me? And I will say that Number one, nobody hasn't reached out to me, okay? There's that. I usually find myself to be the one reaching out to people, which is irritating. I talked about this in a TikTok a while ago because it doesn't feel good. Like, excuse me, why do I have to mainly be the one reaching out to people? Why can't people surprise me? Why can't people, more often than not, let me just say that, I gotta add the caveat, more often than not. We're not using blanket statements because it's not true that nobody ever checks on me. That's not the case. It's just more often than not, I'm the one who's doing that. And it doesn't feel good, okay? Yes, I do take the charge. Yes, I do take the lead many times, but no, I don't wanna always do that. The hell? <laughs> so even when I think about workplace friends, them folks ain't checking on me, you know, every now and than I have in the past checked on people like, yo, what's going on? But it's awkward, isn't it? I mean, comment and let me know. It's awkward because outside of the usual pleasantries, what's there to really talk about? I mean, you don't work together anymore. Excuse me. Turning this beauty sponge around. Let's blend it. Oh yeah, I still have the blemishes right here. Not as dark as before. They are fading with skincare and time. Oh my gosh, let's put a fragrance on top of this glow. Brown, I almost said brown sugar, babe. Brown girl Jane from Sephora, black owned beauty brand. I love this. It smells like a Caribbean Carnival. Is that how you say it? I almost wanted to say Carnival, but I think it's Carnival. It smells like Caribbean. Mango, sweet, delicious, beach. This is so freaking good. I needed to smell something while I sit here and talk to you. Uh -huh. Cheers. Now let's talk about content creator relationships. Girl, it's a little bit of a doozy. We're contouring with the Elf Powder Foundation. Ooh, oh my God, I took too much. <laughs> And I'm the one that should be reminded. I'm just so distracted with the conversation. You gotta be careful where you first put this down because you're gonna get the most product. Well, you just saw it in real life. Let's blink, should we blend this out? What, how? Okay, that's been a little bit of a doozy. What I have found is that it's easy to follow people on social and if you come across them in real life to just feel, or even just, just in the DMs, to be so excited to connect that you don't do enough due diligence in making sure that you and that person are aligned. And by alignment, I mean that in a myriad of ways, not just we both create content, so let's be friends. It's do we even agree on life? Do we agree on relationships? Do we agree on loyalty and having hard conversations? Do we just get along outside of creating content, right? I've been there where let's get together and shoot content and then the friendship doesn't go well. I've been there where the friendship is going well and then it's not going well. And it's my choice because <laughs> it's my choice because I don't agree with what I'm seeing off camera. I have experienced situations where what is shown on camera is not the whole entire story. I'm editing my words as I talk. So when what is being shown on social is incongruent with what I'm seeing in person, I have a problem with that. I pride myself on when in relationship with people in real life, them saying, you're the same. You're the same on social as you are in person. Isn't that how it's supposed to be? Is there supposed to be a difference? Because I just be like, oh yeah, okay, that's good. I don't, what? But of course I've experienced the former where there's some differences. 
And I don't like that. I need things and people to be congruent. What you say and what you do needs to match. And when it doesn't, I'm out. I don't have time for the charades. I'm gonna fit, girl, this makeup is doing a, a few things today that I'm not interested in. I don't have time for the circus. I don't like that. I need it all to align, because here's the thing. I am old school, and I feel very firmly that who you hang around is very indicative of who you are. So if there are things that you do say, ways that you behave that I don't agree with, and I'm still being seen with you, hanging with you. What does that say about me? I mean, what? And I, I don't believe in having secret friendships. Like, okay, I'll be this person's friend, but I'm just not gonna post with them because I don't want the public persona to look like I'm in agreement with this behavior or these choices. No, if we're gonna be friends, we're gonna be friends. And if we're not, we're not. I don't hide my friendships, you feel me? So content creator relationships are really a tricky one that I find. I mean, again, it's just so easy to, oh, she looks real chill. I feel like we could get along. And you really just never know. I got some new new from Fenty. This is afternoon snack and mo honey. And here's the swatch. Ooh, I'm gonna go with the less highlighted one. Although they both look great. Okay, this is afternoon snack. Let's see how this looks right here. Okay, nice and subtle. Not me about to push Rare Beauty off the cliff. Cause listen, I'm gonna stand for black on all day, okay? This is good. Ooh, yes. Okay, ooh, I almost took the finger that has mo honey on it, which is a lot frostier. This is a clean finger to just press it in some more. And I could go above the cheek a little. I don't need to, but I am doing it. Look at me, I don't need to as I I'm actually doing it. I don't need to, but look, that looks pretty. Okay, that looks so good. Yes, Fenty, how you doing? This is the Freestyle Highlighted Duo. I love it. Let me put Rare Beauty aside. I like it, but it's out with the older and with the new, okay? Now the back of my hand gonna be mad ashy because I just used my Cinema Secrets brush cleaner, which I talk to you about quite often. You gotta get this because I know one of the days when I'm leaving my brushes dirty sitting around, so then I took some to clean off my hand. It gets stuff off quickly and it has alcohol in it, so it leaves the stuff ashy. So my hand's gonna be ashy, but that's okay. Same brush. Left over product, I just want to reinforce the contour on my nose so that the tip is not so wide because that got wide for a second. Yes, love. Now blush, do I have a new blush? Let's see. This is the NARS Afterglow blush and the shade is Secret Love. Let's do back of the hand. Oh, wait, it's very sheer. Yes, okay, this is meant to be sheer. You know, I don't like sheer. My skin is very deep. Sheer and me don't go well. Let's check it out. All right, back of the hand. And then with the damp sponge that's dirty because it has product on it, which I like because I want it to blend in with my skin. So tapping some, I can't even see anything. What is that? Like, just no. On my skin, no. Do you see anything? Why'd you be like, yeah, I see a little bit. <laughs> what? I mean, it looks like nothing. No, I knew it. Okay, well, if you have lighter skin than me and you like a soft, glowy, light product, then this is gonna be good for you. So what I will do, am I even doing pink today? What am I doing today? Let me go back to orange. Orange blush is my safe haven. I just have to stick with what I know, okay? So Denissa Myrick's blush, let's do this. What I regret to inform you of is the jealousy that still exists. You can't just imagine that jealousy only exists in middle school and high school. No, it exists in adulthood as well because emotionally immature, unhealed, unaware, people who lack self-reflection are still walking the streets. And I wanna believe that as long as we are here on earth, those folks gonna be still walking around and they're gonna be growing up and they're gonna be infiltrating the whole society year after year. And it's unfortunate. So yes, of course, I have encountered that when it comes to the influencer community. I mean, it's again, the same like any community and it's unfortunate because what many of us fail to realize is that just because you don't exhibit this this behavior and behavior meaning jealousy doesn't mean that someone else is not going to exhibit that, okay? Just because you are generous and kind in your opinion, right? Because this is what you feel because then you find folks saying, oh, I think you're this and it's like, really? Oh, okay. But just because you behave a certain way does not mean that the response from other people is going to be Y. Just because you behave X does not mean Y. And here's what I mean. Let me just make it personal, okay? Let's just get to it. I had a relationship, a friendship that I would say that I dissolved because there was a suggestion or ask to rekindle and I decided not to, okay? What we need to understand is that just because there's no reconciliation does not mean that there's any hate or animosity. It just means that you decided to what? Go in a different direction. So in that relationship, right? <laughs> 
<laughs> no, here's the thing. I am fine with feedback. I'm fine if you tell me that I made you feel like X, I made you feel like Y. Cause here's the thing. Impact is different from intent. So if my impact was to be kind and generous and open and loving and sisterly and what have you, but somehow, some way it comes across differently than that, then I found that sometimes it is warranted to apologize for how my behavior or comments have made you feel. That doesn't mean that that was my, that was my intention. It's just the way that it has made you feel. And for that reason, okay, I have in some cases said, yes, I do apologize for that. I'm sorry. This is the Sephora collection retractable brow pencil and the shade is granite. I got to this conversation because of jealousy, right? I don't even know where to begin with this, this topic because I want to be sensitive and I don't, it, like it's just too much, okay? It's just too much. I've had situations where when I sit back and look at it, the person didn't say, I'm jealous of you. I mean, who says that? You feel what I'm saying? But I could just tell from different things, okay? It's just obvious through different things. And this is despite me doing, in my opinion, my best to make sure that I'm being loving, kind, generous, accommodating, just a nice person, excuse me, who wakes up and says, I'm just gonna wreak havoc on everyone, I don't care about anybody and all that. I don't do that, you feel what I'm saying? But then again, the reason why I bring this up is because gone are the days of, I can't believe this person said this about me. I can't believe this person did this. I can't believe this person would even think this about me. I no longer do that. I no longer entertain that, that mindset. I can believe the person said this about me. I can believe that person thinks this about me and I can believe that this person did this. I do, I can, because I've seen it and it has nothing to do with what you've done, said, didn't do, didn't say. Because at my big age, I recognize that people are responsible for their own behaviors, okay? So if a person decides that they're gonna villainize you because you didn't do something or did do something, I had a friend tell me that I purchased something that they wanted and for that reason, it was hurtful to them and I can't recall what else she said. And it's like, what? So, because you wanted this and I bought it, now I'm a problem? Right? It's not even like I bought it and I'm like, ha ha, ha ha. No, it's just, you know that I wanted this and then you went and bought it. And I'm like, oh. Okay, this is what we're talking about right now. You see what I'm saying? So oh, I just lost a train of thought because that just, I just got a flashback. Along the same lines of being a grown woman, if something is brought to my attention that, hey, when you did this, I felt like this, whether I agree with what you're saying or not, I learned to just be able to apologize because you know what? You tell me how you felt. You're not saying that you did this because Maybe I don't think that I was rude, but because you felt like I was being rude to you, then I do apologize. This is, I'm giving you an example, because that was not my intention and I'm really sorry. That's a grown woman thing to do, you feel what I'm saying? That's an adult thing to do and I do think it's important that we all exercise that. We do, because the defensiveness of, oh, you this and you that, I don't, I don't have time. I don't have, the, I don't have the time for that anymore. So all this to say, yes, I have been accused of being a less than nice person. And as painful as that has been in some cases, not every case you care about, but if you care about a certain relationship and then you're told this, it can be like, dang, what in the world? I don't ever know what is going on with anybody else, any other friend's brain. I don't know what my comment or my behavior has triggered for somebody. That is not my cross to bear. It's not my burden to carry. All I know is it's been brought to my attention. I mean, I do prefer that that things are brought to my attention in friendships or any relationship earlier rather than later. I can't stand the two years ago you did this to me and it's like, excuse me. So we've talked and I've seen you so many times since then, you didn't want to tell me? Okay. And I get it, people handle conflict differently, but that's another thing too. In a friendship, you, no, like I need, we need to be aligned. How do you handle conflict? Cause I'm not gonna be walking around you for two years and then you now want to tell me that two years ago I did this to you, then we don't align. That is my choice. We're just not gonna, I, I'm just declaring right now that we don't align because we don't handle conflict the same way. End of story, we have choices of who we are gonna entertain as friends and who we're not, and nothing is by force. I've said that before and I'll always maintain that. Nothing is by force. There's no friendship that's by force, so I don't believe in, oh, well, you know, that's just how this person is and we gotta accept them for how they are. Yeah, I can accept you for how you are and not be your friend. Again, we're not friends. Just because we're not friends doesn't mean I have a hit out for you. It just means what? 
we're not friends and that's okay. I don't have to be friends with everybody and everyone does not have to be friends with me and that's okay. We gotta be secure and I will tell you one thing about me, Midnight DBI is I'm nothing less than. Uh, like it just, what? I don't have any animosity for any friends that I felt and seen evidence of jealousy from. There's no animosity. I talked about this in a different, different video before, maybe a year or two ago where we have to really check ourselves and our own self-esteem and think, is this about that other person? Did that other person make me feel jealous? Are they doing anything that isn't intentional to stunt on me or am I just insecure? And we have to talk about that. I mean, let's be honest about our insecurities. Before I had my surgery, my stomach was a big insecurity for me. Let's just talk about that. So if you have a friend or just know someone who is more fit, let's talk about the fact that, hey man, I really do wish I was a little bit fitter, man. She looks really nice. Let's talk about that. We don't have to be devious about it, but we can be honest and be like, hey man, I really wish. But you know what someone like me is gonna do when I know that this is how I feel? The whole dang, I really wish is gonna turn into, you know, know what, let me put in the work to do what I have to do to get that. Because it's available for all of us, are you kidding? It is available, it being everything, in my opinion, is available to all of us. How do you get it? Work hard, excuse me. If it's emotional healing that we need, how do you get the healing? Uh, do the work, go to therapy. I've been therapy for what, three years now? And I don't have any due date to stop. <laughs> I don't have any uh, completion date, you feel me? Like what? There are too many things that come up that need to be talked about. There are too many things. And to me, all of us need therapy. So you're not gonna catch me going to friends to get help on certain topics when everybody needs to get therapy. What do I what do I look like trying to get advice from you about something when I feel like you need to go to therapy? Wait, what? And that is not even shade, it's a fact. Are you kidding me right now? Therapy has been so helpful to me that you can't point out anyone to me on this planet that is not gonna benefit from it. If you do, I don't agree with you and that's okay. We can not agree. That's okay. That is very okay. The world still spins even if we have differing opinions. So yeah, that, like what? Talking about things in therapy has been a huge blessing to me. And of course, I'm grateful that I can even afford that. What am I doing on the eyes? This is a lot of chit chat. I'm getting a dry mouth. <laughs> this is my old faithful Huda Beauty Chocolate Brown Obsessions palette. I know, I know, I always use this. It's just so easy and the colors just work. So the color that I've hit pan on is this reddish brown right here in the crease. Hi, let's get this right here. In the unfortunate reality, back to the friendship conversation is that clicks still exist. When we think about clicks, we think, or you might think, let me know in the comments below if you think differently. You might think that it's a negative thing. Oh, these people are always together. They're clicked up. They won't, you can't even penetrate their click. Even if you wanted to be their friend, you can't even get into it. It's very us versus you type thing. That's a possibility. Maybe it's just that this core group of people have a lot of similarities in common and they don't wanna open up the group to more people. You feel me? That could be the case. I'm not in a click. <laughs> I don't do clicks, you feel me? I just, I'm not interested in that. Cause then you'll find that there's group think that takes place in these clicks. And I don't go off of what the group wants to do. I go off of what I wanna do and what I think is best. You kidding me? So when it comes to the whole click idea, I do not subscribe to that. But I do believe, I mean, people aren't going around saying, yeah, yeah, this is my click. I mean, maybe, but not to me. I haven't heard that. Uh, I do believe though that clicks still exist even in this creator community. And it just is what it is because I don't entertain a lot of things. And that's one of the things I don't entertain. Yes, can it look fun and look like it's exclusive when you see certain people always together? Yeah, it can look like, dang, that looks real chill. But that doesn't always mean that they're catty. It can, for sure but I don't have examples of that to share where I'm like, yeah, this click right here is catty. But I've heard people say things about clicks or groups of creators who they have considered to be in a click, okay? But you also can't go based on everything that you hear because how do we know that this is even true? A lot of times you hear something and it's someone's opinion that they're stating as if it's a fact. And then my question is, okay, so is, you know this to be true? Or this is what you think? We gotta ask questions like that too because it can get in the way of relationships. I have not used is the MAC eyeshadow in what feels like, this is the shade Wedge. I believe it's been 10 years, okay? This is a light, taupey type color. I recognize that I don't have any eyeshadow base on. I just need to get some makeup on today to go film. <laughs> this is looking like skin or something. I mean, I'm sure that this will look lighter if I had an eyeshadow base on. But yeah, a lot of times I just like to ask questions whenever someone says something because I've been mischaracterized many times in my life. Now, I know that I've been mischaracterized more times than I've come to know because I'm a realistic person. But there have been many a times 
that I've come across information where I've been mischaracterized, where somebody might think that I'm a certain way because when they met me, I wasn't this way. I wasn't the way that they expected me to be. And therefore they've concluded that I'm this. And it's like, yo, again, check yourself. People need to check themselves. And that's what makes a double relationships hard. Like, yo, check yourself. You don't know what that person was going through that day. You don't know what was on that person's mind. I don't have this, but you don't know if someone has social anxiety. So we make all these judgments about people when they, when we say, oh, when I met them, they were like this, because this is creators, okay? So you see someone on social one way. I mean, come on, if you're a creator and you're on camera, you're successful because you know how to turn on. Even if you were just bawling your eyes out, had a stressful day, your water main just broke, uh, who knows what your car needs, and you need all four tires, whatever the case is, even if all of that is going on in your life in the background, good creators know how to show up. When, they, when the red light is on, we're on. Hey guys. It does not mean that you're fake. It means that what? You're professional and you know how to do what? Get the job done. So I find that people will hold your feet to the fire when you don't show up in person and act like the way you do your YouTube videos. And it's like, are you okay? You know, really, are, are you okay? Because what? How many of us are like that all the time? Even with that said, there are some people in their videos who are very calm and nonchalant. So again, I don't care. I, Minadivia, do not care about what people think of me. I don't, I really don't. Outside of making sure that my audience recognizes that I'm truthful, fair, and honest. Outside of that, I don't give a crap what another creator or anybody feels about me in a way where I now feel like I need to be someone else. Absolutely not. I am who I am and that is literally what it is. And it's giving very much take it or leave it. And I've always been that way and will continue to be that way, even in relationships, friendships, because what? I don't put on just to make sure that I'm in a certain group of friends or liked by someone in particular. Absolutely not. I am literally who I am. And and you're gonna enjoy me and my company because you authentically and genuinely enjoy me and my company. And if you don't, that is okay. Being in friend groups is not gonna be what pays my bills. I mean, what? Okay, I'm going back to this Fenty Kilowatt duo situation and I'm gonna do Honey Mo, the lighter, more reflective one in my inner eye and see what that gonna do for the kid. I like how this is a duo. I can use two different shades for two different reasons or whatever. Mm, love that. It's giving very silver, which is in line with the white satin that I have going on. I like it. If you've tried this kilowatt situation, comment and let me know. Oh yes, open up the eyes in a lovely way, okay? But I find that some people want you to be a walk-in comedy show when they see you. It's like, yo, check yourself. If you walked out of the house feeling like you needed someone to pick you up, you should have put on a sermon on YouTube. You should have put on one of them uh, TikTok videos where they be doing all them funny things. You should have put on a wig and a clown nose and then looked in the mirror and made yourself laugh before you came in front of my face. You feel what I'm saying? It's just giving excuse me can people just chill because my face is giving very brown i'm gonna use the huda beauty creamy eye cold the brown one because i'm not trying to make this look dark i like how light the look is looking look at me <laughs> So here is that, and we're gonna make a smudged looking eyeliner. No perfection around here, especially since it's brown. It don't need to be perfect. This is so cute. Although you look probably looking at it thinking, uh, that looks perfect to me. It probably does. <laughs> I've done my eyeliner so many times, honey. Even when I just throw it on, it be straight. So that's a good thing. Practice makes perfect. And I hope you're practicing too. Don't be watching these videos, sitting there eating popcorn. Go ahead and get your makeup out, honey. Let's do it together, okay? That looks good. Good, doesn't it? In my waterline, I am gonna use black because I'm gonna put on black lashes. I mean, they're gonna be bold. It's not gonna balance out the heaviness of my lashes if under my eye isn't dark. It's just, it's just not gonna look right. Now to round out the conversation, if you're wondering, okay, well then how do you foster healthy relationships? Well, <laughs> the thing is we're dealing with people and people are dealing with things. And they're dealing with things that many times have nothing to do with us. We're gonna use Estee Lauder because I do know that I love this. Turbo Lash Mascara. And because we're dealing with people and they're dealing with things, I have found that it is very important. Oh, this is so good. Wow, do you see that? This is so good, I forgot how good this is. If it's a French that I really appreciate and want to maintain, then I have to be gracious. I have to be understanding. I have to consider the benefit of the doubt and I have to reach out. That's what I've learned because it's one thing to feel like, okay, well, I'm always the one it's not always, right? It's it's mostly, all right? I'm mostly the one that reaches out. I'm mostly the whatever. I think it's also important that we communicate and say that to people. But that comes from being secure within yourself to say, hey, I'm noticing that a lot of times, because not always, 
okay? Maybe it's always, God forbid, right? But a lot of times, I'm the one that reaches out to you. I would love it if you check on me sometimes too. You can say that and not say it with the neck and the and the shade. You can say it genuinely because you care about the relationship and you want that person to know that this is what I need. And hopefully that person is mature enough to receive what you've said and then make some changes. If that person is one of those, oh, well you be, oh, well you be, then in my experience and in my opinion, we would no longer be friends. If you are a friend that cannot be self-reflective, aware, secure, we are not going to match. You might be a great person, you might create bomb content, but as far as friendship is concerned, you and I are a no-go. End of story. People don't have to be my friend and I don't have to be other people's friends. We have to really understand that. I find that a lot of times people feel like, oh, I just feel, what? Is this is one of these things by force. They're not. Nothing in life is by force, hello? Excuse me, like what? <laughs> I'm putting on my lash glue, excuse me. But I think it's important to just be honest and say, this is what I'm noticing, this is what I need. Because in adult friendships, it's giving, let's get it on the calendar. It's giving, hey, when can you talk? Because all the cold calling, for some people that just don't work out. You can't be cold calling me, okay? I'm busy, I'm here doing a video, you understand? Grown ups are busy. <laughs> Adults are busy. So sometimes you gotta put it on the calendar to say, hey, you know, let's talk at, you know, when is a good time for you? Okay, I'll call you on Tuesday at six. You know what I'm saying? And then you can't up at that time or if you feel like if I feel like I want to have more meetups because I'm here in Texas and I moved here by myself what 14 years ago that's why this past February I had to reach out and say I want y'all to come down I want more I want to be more connected it took effort to be that honest because I'm very much a loner but I recognize that in this space of my life I want more of a community and then my girlfriends came down and we had a blast I will never forget how that felt and, and what we were able to do and, and how close we got from that visit you feel me so I've learned that it does take vulnerability to just ask for what you need. Now, let's say you ask and then that person ain't trying to hear that. Well, then in my opinion, again, like I said, because nothing is for, nothing's by force and nothing is, no one owes you anything. If that person is not willing to give you what you want, because of course you got to give them what they want to, okay? So this is a two-way street, but we're talking about you right now or me. If that person is not willing to give me what I want, then we can't be friends. It's literally simple in my mind. It is very black and white when it comes to that. We don't align, we're incongruent and that's okay. We can leave space for the reality that it might be painful because because you may really want that friendship. I might really want a deeper friendship with this person, but if that's not what they're able to give at this time, it doesn't help to be bitter or resentful toward that person because they can't give that. Sometimes people just can't give it. You don't know if that person is, is depressed, that person is stressed, that person is dealing with some kind of addiction, honey. I mean, let's be honest. You can be friends with somebody for 20 years and it might not be a deep enough friendship where you really know what they're going through. You feel me? So I've learned to just have grace and, and ask for what I need. And if I'm not getting it, move accordingly. These lashes are real curly. I hope they're okay. <laughs> they're bold. You is nice. You is kind. Is that how it goes? How's that thing go? Putting the same mascara on my lower lash line. This, I forget how good this mascara is. I just love it. What? You can't beat it. Twirl it underneath. Twirl it on top. Comment and let me know what your thoughts are on any of this. We don't have to agree. We can certainly disagree. I mean, hello, we're all different people, you know? And if we don't agree, that's okay. I'm scraping off some of this product because a lot comes out and I think it's a good thing for a lot to come out because I like for my lashes to be thick. So I'm just taking some off and then rubbing this on. I have learned to take my time when it comes to friendships in the sense that feel the person out, see how things go before you start to divulge a lot of sensitive information because if the relationship doesn't last, can you imagine being like, oh my God, I can't believe I even showed them this or said this or opened up in this way to them. And then you have that fear, are they gonna tell somebody? I need to know and trust that even, I mean, I've had friendships for 30 years and there are things that I would never repeat to someone else. Ever. Now, with those friendships, there's no animosity, but even let's say if there was animosity, there are just things that I'm not gonna repeat. It's not my business to say that. There's no place, there's no need. And when you have earlier friendships, shorter duration type friendships, it can be hard to determine, yo, dang, I did not think that we would no longer be friends. So now that we're no longer friends, can I trust that all of this is gonna stay between us? That's a hard, that's a hard place to be. So I've definitely been a proponent of taking it slow. I like to be fun and welcoming and inviting and all the things, right? But you also gotta be smart. I found that it's also important to be smart. Feel the person out because they might be cool and chill, but they might not be the kind of person for me to be to have a really close, deep relationship with. You have the surface level friendships and then you have the deep, I mean, <sighs> 
You know what I'm talking about, the deep relationships, okay? There's a big difference. I'm sure you can relate and say that you have some friendships that maybe there's a friends that you just go out with or you go to brunch with or maybe even travel with, who knows, if you don't talk about much deep stuff on, tra on, on flights or on trips. And then you have the friends who you go to church with or the friends who you go to dinner with. Cause I'm thinking like brunch and breakfast are more light, more effortless. Dinner is like, girl, let's talk, you feel me? So I know you know what I mean when I'm talking about the friendships and how they can be different. You get what I'm talking about. This is a new lip pencil for me by Jones Road. It's called Chocolate. And let's put this on. Oh, okay, this is nice and deep. Wow. Now it's a sharpenable one. It's one that has to be sharpened. You know, I don't like that. I like a twist up. This is creamy though. It doesn't feel like it's gonna break easily. This is nice. Ooh. Now this foundation shade is lighter than usual. And for that reason, my worry is that this, this lip pencil looks dark. If I had a darker foundation shade, this wouldn't look as dark. You know, you know the color theory. You get it. <laughs> Blend that in like so. And what are we gonna put on the middle? Oh, this looks like a peachy, beautiful color. This is hourglass and the shade is peony let's put this on something nude Ooh. Ooh, this is a nice feel. Okay, it's giving sheer. Let's build it up. Uh oh, I just messed up the side. Uh oh. It's looking a little sheer. I feel like a sheer lipstick. This is good because I can still see the pigmentation. Oh, I love the undertone. Yes. This is peach. I love peach. It's different from pink. Oh, it blended nicely into the pencil. I like this a lot. I could do a gloss, but I don't even need to. I like this a lot. And look at the face. Healthy, beautiful shine. I did not spray this afterglow. What extra glow? Extra glow on my face. It was just on the body which you can still see. And the face is matching. You see the material. I love it. Anyway, I've got to also mention, okay, so don't rush it. I don't rush these things anymore. I just let them happen organically. I'll put out my feeler, right? I'll just say like, oh, hey, I would love to get lunch one day. Or I would love to, you know, chat on the phone if you have a second. That's a feeler, right? Because I'm an adult. I can say, hey, I like your vibe. We should talk. You feel me? Like, it's not dating. It's, well, it kind of is what friendship, right? But I don't rush anything. So if it doesn't happen, if something, if it takes forever, that's okay. Because I do believe in Jesus and some things just need to take time or to not happen at all, okay? I also do not fan over anybody. It almost said maybe you might see someone in your heart might flood like, oh my God, that's so-and-so. But I never say it or let it show because no, you are a person just like me. We both go to the same bathroom. We both shower the same way. I'm not gonna fangirl over anybody. So it's important to check yourself in that regard before any of this because it just messes things up. And I never wanna be friends with somebody who was fangirling over me. Absolutely not. It just makes, no, don't idolize me. I don't want that because the minute I make a mistake, it's a problem. You feel what I'm saying? So the answer is no. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this chit chat, this long girl talk type situation. I know the video was long. If you watch the whole thing to the end, girl, let me know in the comment below. I appreciate you so much. Thanks for watching. Follow me on all socials and let me know if you like this look and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.